Hey everyone, what's up? This is Tony from 15 Minute Gamer and welcome to the channel. So as always, if you like the video, drop it a like and don't forget to click that subscribe button. I post a few videos a week and there's always something new to check out. So without delay, let's crack on with today's video. In today's video, Grand Theft Auto 5 is making a comeback onto the channel. But before we do any of that, I have a fresh install of Grand Theft Auto 5. I want to get LSPDFR in there, I want to get Script Hook, I want to get Open IV. I want to get the Simple Trainer installed, I want to start modding in police cars, and you know what, it's time to update all my guides on the channel, and what perfect time to do it, it's 2021, and it's time to do it, so, I'm running this from afresh, as I just said, this is a guide, it'll take you through the step-by-step -step processes of how to get LSPDFR working, because it can look a little bit complicated when you start off, I know... I've reinstalled and installed LSPDFR a million times over the years. I've installed all sorts of mods, all sorts of cars, all sorts of trainers, changed pedestrians, clothing. And I want to show you how to do it all. Also, we're going to cover the bugs you might get, what, how you fix them, because over the years, I think I've hit every bug this program can throw at you. And I want to update all them videos as well. So that's what we're going to do. The things you will need, obviously, is a legit copy of Grand Theft Auto 5 that is updated. It needs to be updated to the latest version. You will also need to download OpenIV. Very, very, very important. I'll put the links in the description. It's OpenIV.com. You'll need to download Script Hook V. Get that downloaded. You'll also need to download LSPDFR. We're going to go through the website in a second. Download a 7-zip or WinRAW program. WinRAR is popular, but I prefer 7-Zip, always have used it. And also, just to start off, some sort of simple trainer. Just Google simple trainer, Grand Theft Auto 5, and this will come up. Does it tell you how many downloads it's had? 5 million. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of people use this one, and it's the one I use. It's just, as the name suggests, it's simple. 5 million people can't be wrong of how good that is. LSPDFR, head on to the website. You just want to click straight in, so you can see it's lcpdfr.com slash lspdfr. The reason for that is because that was from when it was Grand Theft Auto 4. Um, I didn't play much of the police model on Grand Theft Auto 4, I have to say. So, yeah, go in there, click download lspdfr 0.48 is the latest version. Come down and just click on download this file here. That is kind of important of what you need to know. Download that, and now you've got your OpenIV downloaded, your script hook, your 7-zip, and your simple trainer, and LSPDFR. So if I bring up my downloads folder, we can see here, obviously minus 7-zip, because I don't need to download 7-zip, I've got it already. All the rest is totally fresh. I've removed all of them from my computer, so we can go through this together. The latest update for LSPDFR has changed the installation slightly. It used to have a program that did it all for you. Now you've got to do it manually, so it might be a little bit more complicated, but it's just clicking and dragging, really. Um, other things you're going to need to know is where is your Grand Theft Auto 5 folder? This you're going to need to know a lot of because you'll be going in and out of this folder constantly, like all the time. <laughs> You will, I usually have a copy of this on my desktop, to be fair, because I'm in and out of it so much. Um, I would also recommend doing a copy of your Grand Theft Auto 5 video. There is a few caveats here. Once you mod it, you will not be able to play online. So you might want to make a copy for modded content and a copy for your online. I make a copy because, well, you can break it. And, you know, there's nothing worse than when you try and load a Grand Theft Auto. It's totally broke and you can't figure out what the last thing you did was. So sometimes having the copies just right, just go... I was messing around in the vehicle file somewhere, right? I'll just copy the vehicle file from there into there. I'm usually going to make a backups and copies and so forth, but I just always have a backup copy of Grand Theft Auto already. It's about 100 gigs, so if you mess it up, to download 100 gigs again is kind of annoying. So yeah, I make a copy of it. And it's found on mine on new volume F, so that's just my hard drive. That's my secondary hard drive. Program Files x86, Steam, Steam Apps, and Common is generally where you're going to find it. If you don't know where you've installed it, you can go into Steam, right-click your Grand Theft Auto installation, you know, just in the library, and Properties, and then View Folder. It's in there. 
and you can find out where it's located. But you will need to know where it is for the process of this. Right, I'm going to open up this manual install. So you can see here it's installed. We're just going to move that across there a little bit. That across there. Double click on there. All these programs are kind of the same. They're not that different when you get into them. They might have slightly different buttons, but generally all the same. And all we need to do is drag all this into here. So there's two ways you could do it. You could extract it. So I could click extract and then extract it in here. Or I can just do that. Um, I think that's just easier. <laughs> And there we go. It's now installed that all across. You might have to overwrite some files depending, but in this case, none. We're straight into the game. Perfect. Now that is your game file ready to play LSPDFR in a sense. So that's the first step done. Next step is script hook V. So I'm just going to open up 7zip here. You can see here. It's got README. If you get confused, click on README. It just says script hook v is a library that uses GTA 5 script native functions in custom ASI plugins. The ASI plugins are basically the mods inside the game. So you might have ones for callouts or certain events or something like that. And as you can see here, installation, copy script hook v to the game's main folder, i.e. where GTA 5 is located. In order to load, you have to have the ASI installed. And it just tells you that. So basically all you literally do, click on there. This does come with a trainer already inside. You don't need that trainer. We've already got a trainer. So I'm just going to basically grab that, put that across there. And that, according to the instructions, is as easy as that. You see, it's, when you look into it, it's not that confusing. So, yeah, we'll copy that. It didn't say anything about that, but we'll copy that across. We can always get rid of it if we don't need it. Um, we can just literally click on it and delete it. So that is your script hook installed into the game folder as well. Next up, we're going to put open IV. So I've already got this downloaded. I'm going to open up IV. We'll drag this across onto the screen so you can see what's happened. This is how you access all your files and mod them as well. So we're going to click on English. Yep, we're not Russian. Don't worry, this isn't some sort of like Russian spyware. <clears throat> it's just, I think it's from a Russian company. So then continue. Uh, install OpenIV to this computer. We'll install it on the C drive. I'm fine with that. Click continue. Yep. So that's just going to run through the install. It doesn't take that. It's only 19 megabytes. And then what we'll do is link this up to our Grand Theft Auto directory. And then close. So what I'm going to do now is open up that. So I'm just on the other screen. Drag that across. You can see it It has. It knows what you've got installed or had installed on your computer. Obviously, we're interested in Grand Theft Auto V and won the Windows version. So just click Windows. It'll then ask you to choose your Grand Theft Auto 5 folder because you could have a copy like I do. So I'm just going to click Browse. And we're going into my F drive. We're going down to there. Yes, I have a very messy hard drive. <laughs> Don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> Steam apps. And the common and all the way down. I play so many games as you can tell. All right, Grand Theft Auto 5. Select folder. And it'll say that it's found the latest version. It'll work. Click continue. Do not forget the backup. We will never forget the backup. Don't worry. It's then going to do this, which is basically searching for keys. It'll look for certain files. It takes about a minute. It's, it's not a huge process as well. So while that's kind of doing its thing. We'll open up the trainer. You can see here, trainers, we've also got another readme file. A lot of these do have readme files. So we'll just open that up in Word. And there you go. It just tells you what to do. You can do vehicle options, ped spawning, mission spawning, model spawning, teleporting. You can do whatever you want. There's the key binds. You can change the key binds. You can move them. And basically all we do, we'll just have a look, make sure there's nothing extra on there. There's a list of weather types. And that's all the changes that have come up in 0 0.9, which I think came out about November. And all we want to do is grab these two files, get our Grand Theft Auto 5 folder. I told you we're going to be in and out of here like constantly. <laughs> and we're just going to click and drag like so. And there we go. We have our trainer and trainer in there. So we've now got a simple trainer installed. Some mods just go into here. Some will be created into a mod folder, which I don't have. 
So let's go ahead and create that folder now and then I'll explain why this is important later on. So to get the mods folder in here, we're going to right click, we're going to click new, we're going to go to folder, we're going to type M-O-D-S, mods with the S, M-O-D-S, press enter. Simple as that, we now have our mods folder ready to use. Now that we've had a little look at Open IV, we're not going to mod any vehicles or anything in yet. We're going to start loading up LSPDFR because it's a little bit of a different process to loading up Grand Theft Auto 5 normally. So we're going to get rid of Open IV. We're going to grab our GTA 5 directory just on like this, and then we're going to do it from here. If you click on the LSPDFR folder into here and click Keys, you can see all the buttons that you need for this game. There is a lot of buttons that can all be changed. Um, so if it doesn't quite suit you, you can change it. But can you see there, it shows you the controller keys as well. You're going to be using Grand Theft Auto with controller generally. I do anyway. So yeah, you can see controller key P, uh, pad down. It's the pursuit menu, crime report, toggle duty, start vehicle selection, perform arrest. So if I want to perform arrest, it's D-pad right. So that tells you how you can do everything on there, but you can change it once you're in game. But I would make a note of some of these keys or put on your second monitor for when you're playing. Because once you start installing mods and plugins, you're going to have loads more keys as well, like millions of keys. Right. To get this working, you do not run Grand Theft Auto 5 or anything like that. You come down to this one here, which is called RagePluginHook.exe. This is how you run the game. Double click on it. You'll get this box just basically, basically saying that do you accept the terms and conditions? Yes, we do. This is going to come up. Rage plugin who can back up your current game version. Always click yes. Never click no. If you click no, you're stupid because <laughs> it could break. If it breaks again, it's another fail safe that you've got to back up all your game files. And trust me, you're gonna need it when it comes to it. So once it's installed, you've got the console key is F4. So that's what you press when you wanna access the console. So it's kind of like, the console's like the advanced uh, trainer. You can see, you can do plugins. You can click don't load any plugins on startup or you can load all them on startup automatically. I tend to have mine set as load these plugins on startup. But if you're new to Grand Theft Auto 5, you need to do the full tutorial mission first. So sometimes it's best just not to load up. So yeah, and this means I can show you what to do once we're in the game. Nothing else on here is that interesting. There is something I'm going to show you later on for one of the issues you might come across in the game. But apart from that, everything else is there. Now you come down and go to save and launch. And once you've opened that, Grand Theft Auto will start as normal. One of the differences you'll find is the loading screen is slightly different. Once you get past this, you'll see kind of in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see Rage plugin hook with the version number. So that's your first thing. If you do not see that while you're loading up, the chances are it's not going to work. So you want to keep an eye out for that little Rage plugin hook in the bottom right hand corner. And then this screen will appear, which is again slightly different from what you'll normally see. And this is how you know it is working. So as you can see, everything's loading in. Initializing game support, velocity, patching code, waiting for game initialization. So once you're in the game, press F4, type in reload all plugins, press tab. You can see you just press tab, press enter, get rid of that. And that's gonna reload all your plugins. So it'll load in as PDFR, It'll load in anything else you've kind of got ready saved in there. So like once you've got the radios in there, once you've got missions in there, once you've got everything like that, it'll load everything. It takes a few minutes, but it just, as you can see, it's running through all its stuff now. There we go. Plug in loaded, LSPD, I've added 16 new commands, type help in the console to see what they are. And we've got a nice little T pose going on. And we now are ready to play LSPDFR. So you can see that was the trainer that came up there. So because it's set with F4 as well, you can see there. So you can go on there and you just move around with the uh, numpad keys. So you can just spawn a a ped if you want to. Like <laughs> that's that's kind of what it does. And yeah, we can now play LSPD if you want to play. All you got to do is get to your nearest police station. So we're just gonna jump in the car.
This is a Franklin's car. He's going to try and get in with me. Oh, I was trying to get away before he got here, but it's fine. Wee! Park like a boss. Jump out. Run to the police station. Go at the door. Press right on your controller. So your right D-pad. That'll take you into the police station. And from there, that's when you can access and get logged in. Ready for duty. So you do is click go on duty. This is where it'll log, uh, load up. That's going to ask me to do. See? Told you it's totally fresh install. Told you. Got loads of things. This is what my character is going to look like. So there we go. There's my lovely new character. Look at yourself. Officer Tony, I think. There we go. Great new character. Oh, I didn't want to do that, man. Save and continue. I don't want you to even have a name. We'll just do that. You can have as many characters as you want. So we'll select Officer Tony. Click on that. Because we've nicely created what we're going to look like now. So you can visit any of the police stations in the city. So you can go around any of them. You don't have to start here. So Police Locker is where you get your outfit from. So you can have, say, Noose. There you go. You can have FIB. You can have... Well, you can have... LSPDFR if you want. You can have different, like, things of them. So there you go, the cop. You can have variations of it. So you can have, like, an officer, or you can have officer two, officer three, senior detective if you want. You can have patrol, patrol stun. So I want, right, I want patrol. I want advanced customization so you can put things on, things on and off. You can do quite a lot. And we'll just click confirm. Police garage is where you select your car. So inside here, once you mod cars in, you'll have different cars. We'll just select that. Press continue and confirm. You can select any, like loads of different kinds of police cars. And there you go. We are on duty and ready to go. And that's simple as that. We can now play the game. And that's simple as LSPDFAR is to get started. Obviously, we're going to mod it because we want custom callout. We want better vehicles because these police cars are a bit boring. ELS, which basically means you can um, have light patterns. So say light one will just be orange flashing lights. Uh, point two might be something else. Point three will be full on blues and twos. You can turn sirens on and off. So you can have sirens set. You can have, yeah, there's a lot to do. Flashing wigwag lights you know, on the front so that your lights go on and off, kind of in, in you know, as you see with police cars generally. Get traffic to move out the way better. So, yeah, that's all what we're going to look at. But that is how you get LSPDFR installed, started, and ready to go. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.